Most people accept aging as a natural progression of life. In other words, when you get older, things happen. You get wrinkles on your face. Your muscles get smaller. You might have aches and pains all over your body. You know, that's pretty bad. But what's even worse is when you get the degenerative diseases that are associated with aging, such as cardiovascular disease and cancer, uh, the diabetes, all of these things are related to the aging process. There's a reason why cancer rates are highest among people that are over 50 years old. Uh, I'm not going to get into it here. I discussed this in my Applied Metabolics publication. Uh, but in other words, as, as I say, most people just, you know, they do whatever they can. You know, you try and follow a good diet, you eat clean, you go to the gym, you exercise, you do aerobics to work, uh, exercise your heart and your cardiovascular system. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you know, and you look in the mirror, you're still getting older. And, you know, you just basically say, well, I'm doing the best I can. Well, a lot of people, some people don't, uh, actually very few people have another attitude. Uh, as Dylan Thomas's famous post is, they rage, rage, rage against the night, talking about the, uh, the passing of his father. Well, there's a particular ind individual who rages, rages, rages against the aging process. Now, you probably, if any of you who look at YouTube videos, I'm sure you've come across this guy. He's been all over the place lately. He's been interviewed by dozens of people. He's had do he has had many, many articles written about him. His name is Brian Johnson. Now, he's a 46-year-old entrepreneur. This is a guy who's very wealthy. He made his money by uh, having a company that uh, produced a, a, a kind of uh, app that allowed financial tra uh, transactions uh, you know, o over the internet or, you know, through a mobile phone. And uh, this company was very successful. He sold the company for over $800 million. Now, what does he do next? He decides that he doesn't like the way he looks. He was a little, he felt he was a little on the pudgy side. I mean, the guy was in his early 40s and he, he, um, he was a very intelligent guy. This guy, kind of like a nerdy type. He's almost like a nicer version of Elon Musk. In other words, he doesn't come off as arrogant as, as Elon Musk. But on the other hand, he, he could see that he has a sharp brain. He's a quick thinker. And he's very analytical. So what he did is he uh, gathered a team of 30 physicians and he, and um, to monitor his everything in his body. I mean, he has in his home an entire lab set up. And these 30 physicians regularly monitor him. He undergoes constant tests of every one of his organs, his heart, his liver, everything. You know, he monitors the rate of aging. And uh, based on research, his, 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 um, his uh, medical team advises him to take certain supplements that supposedly will delay the aging process. Now, he's done some crazy things. Um, my personal feeling about the guy, again, I, I never met him. I never spoke to him. But just from viewing his, uh, his various uh, interviews, uh, I think he's uh, uh, what they call extremely obsessive compulsive to, to, to an extreme degree. I mean an extreme degree. Uh, this guy, to me, has a very strange appearance. When I first looked at him, I don't know if you guys ever, are, are anyone you are out there are Star Trek fans. You might remember there was a character who was a, a kind of a humanoid. He was a robot with uh, kind of human features in one of the Star Trek TV shows called Data. He was called Data. He had this funny colored skin and everything. Well, Brian Johnson, to me, looks like Data, except for the, you know, the kind of weird coloring that Data had. He looks a lot like Data. His hair, everything, he looks like kind of a, a robotic, artificially looking person. Uh, but, you know, he does, but the man is 46 years of age. And I have to admit, he does look a lot younger than his age, but now he does some crazy things. Like I said, uh, a while back, he, he tried to experiment what they call parabiosis. What's parabiosis? A parabiosis involves attaching, let's say, two animals, let's say rats, attaching them together, usually through their spines, through the back, where they share the blood supply. Because some studies have showed that if you infuse older animals with younger blood, there's something in the younger blood that has regenerative effects in the older animals. 
So he took this to heart, uh, Brian Johnson did, and he got transfusions of blood from his 17-year-old son and his 70-year-old father to experiment with uh, his version of parabiosis. But he abandoned that because it didn't seem to do anything. And, and that kind of confirms what studies have shown. I mean, there's been clinics set up that charge thousands of dollars to undergo blood transfusions where they you know, infuse supposedly younger people's blood into older people, which is supposed to completely regenerate them. But the problem is even it might work in rodents. This is another example of something that works in animals, doesn't seem to work in humans because parabiosis through blood transfusions from young blood to old blood uh, doesn't work in humans. And that's what Brian Johnson found out. And he abandoned the practice. The one thing about Johnson is he tries everything. This guy has the money. He, sp he says he spends $2 million a year, $2 million a year on what he calls his blueprint program, which I guess blueprint means blueprint for anti-aging. He calls it the blueprint program. He sp and he spends, like I said, $2 million a year. He has his whole staff. He has an entire lab set up. Uh, some of the machines he has in his house uh, cost $200,000. Uh, this is way, way above the pay scale of 99.9% .9 of Americans and people around the world. Very few people will, able, will be able to indulge in the practices that Mr. Johnson regularly uh, uses. I mean, you know, you, nobody can afford those machines. Uh, the man lives in a huge house. He has the room for all this stuff. Uh, one of his machines I got a kick out of. He was explaining in the video. It was a machine where uh, you could, uh, it, it shows basically the extent of ultraviolet damage in your skin that cannot be visibly seen. And I, I'm looking at this, and, and you know, he, 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 he illustrated on a, some guy that was visiting. He showed how even the guy, guy was a young guy, you really couldn't see any damage. But according to this imaging system, the guy did show ultraviolet damage, ultraviolet skin damage underneath the skin. Again, not visible to the naked eye. My, my question is, what difference does it make? I mean, ultraviolet, the, the biggest problem with ultraviolet exposure to the sun is not only the aging effect, but the fact that it can cause DNA mutations and cause cancer. So you can say, well, that device is useful because if it can show ultraviolet, let's say, lesions under the skin that are not visible, it might give you an early warning system against skin cancer. However, most forms of skin cancer, you could see the early warnings on the skin itself. You don't need a thirty or forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar machine, whatever it costs, to show that. And and not only that, and this is just common sense, you could see the extent of a skin damage on a person. I have a lot of my friends back in the 70s, you know, we all used to lie in the sun to get a tan because you needed a tan to compete, just like you do today. It looks better if you compete in bodybuilding, you have a skin, skin color. Today, luckily, most of the bodybuilders use makeup. They don't really have to get a deep tan. Back then, though, the makeup stuff was garbage, so you had to get at least a light tan. And a lot of the guys really spent a lot of time in the sun. And uh, when I run into some of these guys, some of them I haven't seen in years, I don't need an imaging system to see the price they paid for all that sun worshiping. I mean, these guys are about my age, uh, maybe one or two years older or younger, and they look like my grandfather as far as skin aging goes. The, the extent of wrinkles is amazing, and that's all sun damage. So you don't need a machine to show them. Another thing that I got a kick out of it with Johnson was his, um, he has a device, it's an electrostimulation device. Now, I don't know if they, I don't watch television, so I don't know if these commercials still exist, but for years I had these infomercials claiming that if you use this electro muscle stimulation machine, it was the equivalent of hours of working out. In other words, it, it basically uh, it automatically led to a very powerful muscle contraction, and, uh, and it was equal to hours of working out. And, and uh, in illustrating his particular uh, electro muscle stimulator, Johnson made a statement that he applies it to his abdominals, and he said it's the he says it's the equivalent of 22,000 sit-ups a day, which I really I burst out laughing. I actually laughed out loud when I saw this. First of all, how does he measure that? How does he know that? It, I mean, I'm sure he, I'm sure it feels it. You know, you could see it's like I mean when he puts it on, you know, it tightens up. 
But, I mean, how does he equate that to 22,000? Where did he come up with that figure, right? And not only that, but, you know, when they've done the, the best use for electro EMS machines, electro muscle stimulation, is in, is in rehab. In other words, if you, if you have a muscle that's, for example, immobile, let's say you have a broken leg, broken arm, and you want to avoid muscle atrophy, if you use the electro muscle stimulation machines, they'll contract the muscles uh, underneath uh, you know, enough to prevent excessive atrophy. For that use, they're really good, and they're used in physical therapy for that purpose. But as far as increasing muscle strength, muscle definition, nothing. They're, they are no better, and they're, and they're actually inferior to res normal resistance training. Now, another thing to consider about Johnson's program, and this is a very important aspect. If you look at the guy, like I say, he looks pretty good for his age. I mean, uh, I don't know whether he's had face, I, I couldn't tell you, but his skin, I mean, he doesn't show any lines in his face at all. He has dark hair. His hair looks like it's dyed. I think he's, I, if I remember correctly, I think he denies dyeing his hair, but it, it looks very much like dyed hair. I mean, that does not look like a real hair color, but it's artificially dark. Let me put it that way. He doesn't have a single gray hair in his head, but he's not that old. He's only 46. When I was 46, I didn't have any gray hair either. And I didn't, I didn't spend $2 million a year on, any, on a program. But anyway, the point is that he's very lean. The guy's lean. He likes to take his shirt off, walk around. I mean, I don't see a lot of muscle on him. He's fairly athletic, but uh, he doesn't have great abs for a guy who uses a machine that supposedly equals 22,000 sit-ups. I would expect him to have like these adult, uh, these out-of-the-world abdominals. He doesn't have it. He has superficial abdominals that you'd see in any skinny guy on the beach who doesn't even do a single sit-up because of lack of body fat. The man looks like he has low body fat. Why does he have low body fat? Because he only eats he eats 1,900 calories a day. That's a, that's a He's on a calorie restriction diet. 1,900 calories for a normal-sized man is a calorie-restricted diet. That's very low calories, uh, and he and he only eats. Uh, let me see this. I have to bring this up here. I have it somewhere here. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Uh, he eats. He goes to bed at 8:30 p.m. Like I say, he eats uh, under 2,000 calories, and he gets all his food intake between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. In other words, the rest of the day he fasts. I mean, using that program, anybody would be lean. Anybody would be lean. Now, here's the point, though. Uh, he's ba uh, I'm sure that his 30-member his team of his uh, medical monitoring team, whatever you want to call them, they probably they supposedly look at all the, uh, the uh, gerontological or anti-aging research, and they, uh, they probably have looked at the, uh, the studies with animals that show that calorie restriction, uh, an average reduction of 30 to 40 percent of, da of daily calorie in caloric intake can extend lifespan in a various species of animals. Uh, but the problem is there's no evidence whatsoever that it does so in humans, nothing. And, and, in, uh, and when they've tried it in monkeys, uh, it didn't work as well. Uh, and, and not only that, but longevity experts uh, who really are really into this stuff, they estimate that if you followed uh, a, uh, a long-term, severely calorie-restricted diet, you could expect to live seven years longer. And to me, that's a high price to pay for, you know, for, uh, for uh, year, probably, what, 30, 40 years of near starvation and hunger to get an extra seven years, not worth it, in my opinion. So, of course, to get that few calories, Johnson follows a, a vegan diet. He doesn't eat any animal proteins at all. It's all plants, nuts, and fruit. And, and uh, on his, he has a website called Blueprint. Is it called? Uh, it's called Blueprint or something like that, BrianJohnson.com. And uh, he, he outlines... He puts a lot of recipes on there. He outlines the food he eats and, and this and that. Now, the interesting thing to me about Johnson is that, you know, first he, he, he did a lot of these interviews. He was, started, he was all over the place. He got a really large following. And then, just like a lot of other Internet influencers, he decided to go, go commercial. And now he has a whole line of supplements he's selling. Uh, an example of this is a, uh, a extra virgin olive oil that he sells. It's $60 a bottle. 
and he says it's the purest and best olive, extra virgin olive oil you could buy. There's none better. And I have no doubt, I'm sure it is, uh, you know, and, but he says that's, if that's the number one food, if you're interested in longevity, that's the most important thing you could eat uh, is uh, extra virgin olive oil. Again, this is his opinion. Uh, I'm going to do an article on extra virgin olive oil in my applied metabolics. It does have a lot of health benefits. There's no question. Uh, and there's a, another thing that he points out, which is true, is that most of the extra virgin olive oil sold in, let's say, supermarkets and stores, it's not even extra virgin olive oil. It's fake. It's usually olive oil with extra vegetable oil added, or it's not, or it's just virgin olive oil, which there's a big difference between virgin olive oil and extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil has a lot more protective nutrients, polyphenols, antioxidants. So he's got a point about that. Uh, it's whether you want to spend $60 uh, on a bottle of uh, uh, olive or extra virgin olive oil, that's up to you. But I, now I'm on his site. And I wanted to read a couple of things. I want to first go over his, uh, his supplement program. Uh, other people have done this, but the people that have tried to analyze his program, I've looked at their videos. These people don't really know much about nutrition. They don't know much about supplements. So there's not, not they, their comments are really nothing. There's nothing to it. I'm going to use the experience I have with supplements over six decades. I'm going to give you my opinion on his supplement program, and including whether it or not it will contribute to longevity as he thinks it will. But let me read. Um, I'm looking at his saying. I want to read off it. He says, this is my results. From, he says he's been on this program for two years. He calls it the Blueprint Program. Here's, here's, what he, here's some of the results he's had after two years. Slowed pace of aging by the equivalent of 31 years. Now accumulating a aging damage slower than 88% of 18-year-olds. Body inflammation is 85% below the average 18-year-old. VO2 max, top 1-5% of 18-year-olds. Total bone mineral density, top 2% of 30-year-olds. Perfect liver fat, top 99% highest muscle volume. Bottom 0.5% visceral fat, muscle fat, and subcutaneous fat volume. Top 1% sleep performance. Possibly increased thymocyte volume to 7 years younger. Ideal whole body muscle and fat. 50 plus optimal cl clinical outcome biomarkers. Perfect liver biomarkers in those liver enzymes. He says he does a single rep leg press of 800 pounds, which is the t uh, equal to the top 1 to 2% of 18-year-olds. Now, I'd like to have Mr. Johnson make a video of him uh, leg pressing 800 pounds. I'd like to see what his form is. He says he can do a, a single rep bench press of 240 pounds, which again would put him in the top 10% of 18-year-olds. 12-year uh, age reversal in the 500-day average. In every 500 days, he gets a 12-year um, age reversal. Reduced alpha clotho clotho biological age by 21 years. 31-year uh, age reversal in gray hair. Uh, bright, uh, I don't want to go into any more, uh, free testosterone index, reduced 20 years, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into the rest of it, but obviously these are spectacular results. And like I say, the man is constantly monitored. He has, he has the money to be constantly tested. I, I don't know how often he undergoes these tests, but it, it seems like he undergoes it all the time. Another thing that he says, he, he loves to exercise. He claims that he, he exercises seven days a week. Uh, I think that's a mistake right off the bat because you do need to have some rest. But I guess he's obsessed about having low body fat. That's a mistake right there. I don't think that anyone needs to do that. Uh, then he lists his, uh, his uh, lab tests. I'll just read off a few of them. He claims to have 6.9% body fat. He has a, a resting plasma glucose of 82, which is very good. Uh, he uh, Let's see, what else? Uh, IGF-1, 151, pretty good. LDL, 74, very good. Uh, let's see, triglycerides, 55. He, now, he has, a, he has a 769 total testosterone level. Now, that, I have to say, is pretty spectacular for a guy who's a vegan. I mean, to have a, a, a testosterone level of 769, uh, the, the scale of testosterone goes from 300 to 1,000. So he's in the upper limit of testosterone, testosterone, and he's 46 years old because testosterone levels start to drop when you're 40. 
So, you know, having a, a, a total testosterone of 769 uh, as a vegan is, to me, I've never heard of that, quite honestly. Vegans usually have um, uh, lower testosterone levels, uh, not necessarily deficient, but far lower than 769. Uh, he says in his two years, uh, he, his pace of aging, in other words, the, 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 the rate of his aging has gone down 9.2%. Uh, based on DNA uh, testing. So uh, I wanted to now go, he goes into a lot of crap here. He does, you know, a lot of other things. He does uh, uh, He does red light uh, exposure, which is pretty good if, you know, if you could get it. Uh, ba ba his bedroom is completely blacked out. He does light therapy. He does has a special mattress. I mean, this guy is completely, uh, he's got the money to do it. He's, I've, I've never seen this kind of level of obsession. Now, he, like I say, the products he sell, there's one called Green Giant, Super Veggie, Nutty Pudding. I mean, I looked at the contents. They're not bad, but there's nothing There's nothing special about them at all. Nothing special about him at all, to be honest with you. But I wanted to, uh, like I say, he's a vegan. The guy has a very low calorie-restricted diet. I wanted to go on now to his supplements. I'm scrolling down. Uh, I just want to go over each one. Oh, here we go. Okay, here's his supplements. Upon awakening, Acrobos, 200 milligrams. Now, Acrobos is a prescription item that basically is given to diabetics or people with insulin resistance to lower blood glucose. Why is he taking it if he's not diabetic? Well, he wants to control his blood glucose because blood, uh, having a consistently elevated blood glucose, when I say elevated, I mean over 100 resting uh, blood glucose, it is associated with increased aging. It's uh, having consistently high blood glucose or hyperglycemia is one reason why people with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes age five times faster than normal. But Acrobos is a prescription item. He takes the herb ashwagandha, 600 milligrams, pretty good dose. It provides anti-cortisol effects. Uh, cortisol in the brain actually can destroy neurons which can lead to memory deficits, so that makes sense. He takes a carotenoid, uh, something similar to beta-carotene. It's called astaxanthin. Uh, he takes 12 milligrams, which is a good dose. Uh, in a recent study uh, where they tested various substances that are touted for anti-aging effects, most of them failed, some of the most famous ones like resveratrol, physetin, but astaxanthin was actually shown to substantially increase uh, the lifespan of animals. So he, uh, that's probably why he takes it. He takes B-complex, uh, just looks like twice a week, boron, two milligrams, and, uh, not a bad, Broncomax, which is 17.5. Uh, that's a broccoli substance, uh, supplement. I don't understand why he would take a broccoli supplement. The man is taking, eating a ton of vegetables. He's getting all the uh, essential elements that are found in cruciferous be uh, vegetables, like sulforaphane, he's getting it in his vegetables. I don't know why he would take uh, a, 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 a broccoli supplement. He takes 500 milligrams of C, which is a pretty conservative amount. He takes calcium AKG, one gram. That's a pretty good dosage. Calcium AKG uh, is, is a, um, it's involved in amino acid metabolism. Uh, it might help control mTOR. So some studies show that it can actually slightly reverse the aging process. Cocoa flavonoids stimulate nitric oxide. He takes 500 milligrams. He takes 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10, which is very good for the heart. It, it very, it's a, uh, helps to protect the mitochondria, which would be an anti-aging effect. He takes 2,000 units of vitamin D3, which is the recommended amount. 25 milligrams of DHEA, which is good, especially if your uh, lab tests show that you're uh, low on DHEA. He takes only 67 milligrams of vitamin E, which is kind of on the low side. He probably, uh, his doctors probably suggest that because of some very poor studies which show that taking vitamin E can increase mortality. These studies were bullshit, uh, and unfortunately, his doctors are probably going by that study. Uh, vitamin E does not increase mortality. That's absolute nonsense. But I guess he's listening to his medical team, and he's only taken 67 milligrams. He takes 800 milligrams of fish oil uh, nutrients, EPA, DHA, 800 milligram on the low side. That's a little bit on the low side. He takes 200 milligrams of fisetin. That's a conservative amount. 
he takes 2.4 milligrams of garlic and another 1.2 milligrams of aged garlic. He takes 125 milligrams of genistein, which is soy isoflavones, which is supposedly good to help uh, prevent prostate cancer and heart disease. 1.1 grams of ginger root, which is a natural anti-inflammatory. 1,500 milligrams of glucosamine sulfate, which is the right form. You got to take glucosamine sulfate, not hydrochloride. Only glucosamine sulfate. He takes 1,500 milligrams, which is the correct dosage. He takes 125 micrograms of iodine. Again, the correct uh, dosage. You need iodine uh, to for production of thyroid hormone. Vitamin K2 as MK4, 5 milligram, 5 milligrams, good dose. K1, 1.5. He doesn't need K1. K1 is the is the form of vitamin K found in vegetables, and its vegetables are loaded with K1. <laughs> Why he's taking a K1 supplement makes no sense. He takes uh, another form of K2 called M M MK7, 600 micrograms. That's not bad. One one milligram of lithium, a little bit underdosed. Uh, I, the minimum dose of lithium to get any brain effects is five milligrams. 10 milligrams of lycopene, uh, it's an antioxidant, helps prevent prostate cancer. One gram of lysine, not sure why he's taking that, it's an amino acid. He takes uh, 1,500 milligrams of extended release metformin. Some studies have shown that metformin has anti-aging effects and it also modifies uh, the effects of mTOR on aging, that makes sense. He takes uh, nicotinamide riboside, 350, 375 milligrams, which is sub, it's a subnutritional amount. That amount will not do anything. The purpose of nicotinamide riboside is to increase levels of a substance called NAD, which is a essential substance in, in the cells that uh, is extremely important for longevity and health and, and DNA protection. However, the dose that he takes, 375 is underdose. You need at least a gram. He takes 800, 1,800 milligrams of NAC, good amount. He takes an iron supplement called Proferin, 10 milligrams. I don't recommend that men take iron unless they have, uh, they're have they shown to have anemia as judged by blood tests because men tend to recirculate the iron they eat in foods. But on the other hand, since Johnson is a vegan and since the iron, uh, the, the most absorbable form of iron called heme iron is not does not exist in vegetables having taking 10 milligrams of a uh, of an iron supplement isn't that really kind of that doesn't that's that's acceptable he takes 10 milligrams of spermidine now spermidine stimulates a process called autophagy uh, which is very important for health uh, the, the only problem with spermidine is that some recent studies showed that when you take spermidine orally it breaks down as soon as you take it in the body. It breaks down into a into a uh, uh, a byproduct called spermine. Now, whether spermine produces the same health benefits as spermidine, and spermidine does actually uh, provide a lot of health benefits, as shown in animal and some human studies. But that's spermidine in food. Uh, the spermidine concentrated spermidine supplements. Whether they, you know, whether the spermine that results from them actually provides the health benefits of spermidine is open to question. It may and may not. I don't know. He takes a gram of turmeric, good amount. Two grams of taurine, good amount. Recent studies show that taurine does have anti-aging effects. He takes something called Vivical. Viv Vivical. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, he, uh, he takes uh, maybe it's a calcium supplement. I don't know. Zeanthaxin, which is a, another carotenoid, very good for the eyes. Uh, it, uh, it, it's a supplement. It's 20 milligrams of lutein, 4 milligrams of zeaxin. He only takes it three times a week, and he takes 15 milligrams of zinc. Now, all of those supplements I just said, he takes upon awakening. He says that he claims to take 111 pills a day, which, again, is beyond the scope of most people. Most people, I don't care if you tell them they're going to live an extra 50 years, not, most people would not be willing to swallow 111 pills a day. Then his second listing is uh, he takes some, uh, more supplements with dinner, and dinner he call, he take, eats his dinner at 11 a.m. Remember, he doesn't eat after 11 a.m. All the way in, and he goes to sleep at 8.30. So from 11 a.m. to 8.30, it's a fast. He doesn't eat anything. And the supplements are just about the same supplements, about half as many as I said just said, and before bed, he takes in uh, 
300 micrograms of melatonin, which is the suggested amount, you know, to help you sleep. He also takes about two tablespoons of the special extra virgin olive oil. He takes 29 grams of pea protein, 15 grams of dark chocolate. And here's an interesting thing. He takes a drug called rapamycin, which as I, uh, in, in my last video, I discussed mTOR and rapamycin. Rapamycin is thought to be the, possibly the only drug that may or may not extend life in humans. It, it does in animals. Uh, he, he varies the dosage uh, uh, over the month, starting at 13 the first week, 9 milligrams a second, 13 milligrams a third, 4.9. For, you know, uh, I, I mean, to tell you the truth, if, uh, this is what's interesting. If rapamycin, let me put it this way, if rapamycin works like the people who advocate it say, he would need to take any of the, all these other supplements he could toss right out the door. Because rapamycin itself alone would provide more of an anti-aging effect than all of these supplements put together. So that's what's interesting. He also takes an interesting compound. It's, a, it's transdermal, meaning it's a, apparently a topical form. It's called 17-alpha estradiol. Now, don't confuse that with the regular estrogen or the, uh, the, the typical estrogen is 17-beta estradiol. That's the type of estrogen that's predominant in women, and it can cause problems in men if men produce too much. This is a, this is a form of estrogen, 17-alpha estradiol, that does not cause any of the negative effects uh, of regular 17-beta uh, uh, estradiol, but animal studies show it extends, it substantially extends the lifespan of male animals. Whether it does so in humans, again, is a crapshoot. And there's no, to my knowledge, there's no human studies. It may or may not. He takes a, a B12 uh, or as a methylcobalamin just once a week. Doesn't list the dosage. He takes a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, three times a week. And he takes, uh, he takes say, armor thyroid. Uh, which is a thyroid preparation. He takes 112 micrograms because he says he was diagnosed with hypothyroidism at age 21. So that makes sense. So let me see what else I could see here. Uh, let me see. He says he weighs, he says he weighs uh, 171 pounds. He's got 9.1% body fat, which is, you know, pretty, to me, it's, that's a little on the high side. For a guy who exercises as much as he says he does, I mean, that's still low body fat. Remember, the average body fat level for a man is 15%. So he still has lower than average body fat, but 9.1%. And you could see it when he walks around with his shirt on, shirt off. He doesn't have a lot of muscle definition. He's thin, but he doesn't have a lot of muscle definition. Uh, what else? Um, again, this one he says he, has, he eats two. Apparently, he's increased his caloric intake. From uh, under 2,000, he's now eating 2,250. Uh, he, everything he eats is vegan except for collagen peptides. He, every, he goes on a, a daily fast for 16 to 18 hours. He eats 70 pounds of veggies a month. His diet consists of 19% protein, 33% carbs, and 48% fat, which is not that bad. So uh, what can I say? Let me see. I'm just trying to look here. We've been through all that, so um, that's basically it. Uh, for, you know, as I said, uh, Johnson's all over the place. Now that he's come out with his supplement line, which I did look at them, I don't want to go into that because this is not a commercial for Brian Johnson, so I'm not going to discuss the uh, the uh, the ingredients in his various supplements and his and the foods that he sells. Uh, however, I will say this uh, to describe them in one word: mediocre. Uh, his supplements are not that high a potency. There's nothing spectacular about them at all. Uh, in my opinion, they're overpriced. You could get the same benefits by buying the, the nutrients in them separately, and you'd be spending a lot less money. Uh, and also, I want to also add, and this is just common sense, taking the supplements that Johnson takes, and he's not really saying that. The, the guy is not... I wouldn't call him a charlatan or, or, a, or, or a phony. I think he means well. You know, in other words, he, he's trying to use himself as a personal experiment to see if he can ward off the diseases that are, are almost inevitable with aging. And in that sense, 
he thinks he's helping everybody because if his exper personal experiment works, maybe similar programs could be adopted for other people. It will help everybody live longer and healthier and have a, a better health span. Health span, uh, in, uh, which is uh, not the same as lifespan, health span is how long you are healthy till you die. In other words, you want to be as healthy as long as possible. So Johnson's program is to maximize health span. So I think he means well, but you know he's trying to make some money off it. Uh, I, I don't think he really needs it. If he, you know, he's, the guy sold his company for eight hundred million dollars, but uh, you know, uh, like I say, uh, the real problem that I see is that you know again taking his commercial supplements that he's selling, including the extra virgin olive oil, it's not going to give you the benefits that he's shown. His lab, his lab results, quite frankly, and his body composition for is spectacular. I have to admit, if it's true, and I, I assume it is, uh, is absolutely spectacular and highly unusual. There's very few people that have show the health, uh, the health uh, profile that he does. But again, I want to emphasize, following his uh, his supplement program. Or his, uh, uh, I'm not his supplement, but the supplements he sells will not in any way, not in any way, equal the results that he has. In other words, you'd have to do everything he does, which is way beyond the, the capacity or ability of of 99.9% .9 of people on the planet. I mean, you know, think about it. The man has a, an entire room full of lab equipment worth hundreds of thousands of dollars that he uses all the time, probably on a daily basis. I mean, he's obsessive compulsive. He checks the, his, the function of every organ in his body probably every day. I mean, this is a, it's, it's an interesting experiment from a scientific perspective, but from a realistic pr perspective, uh, it's about as unrealistic as you can get. Now, will kind of adopting some of the measures or some of the techniques that Johnson uses help anybody? Yes. The answer is yes. In other words, if you reduce your body fat like he has, if you stay lean, if you stay out of the, out of the stun like he does, you know, so you don't get the UV damage to your skin, and if you also, if you have the ability to lower your calories as you age, uh, you know, you don't have to be a vegan, but, you know, you want to lower your calories, uh, and uh, also take in any, uh, take supplements to supplement whatever you're not getting in your diet. Uh, and, you know, if you do all that, you definitely will increase your health. And, and most likely, you will increase your health span. In other words, you don't have to be as extreme as Johnson. And, you know, and, and you're not going to, you don't have to hire 30 doctors to monitor you like, like you're a lab rat. So I'll just leave it at that. It's an interesting thing. Uh, and the one final thing I'll say is, uh, about the Johnson is that, you know, this is kind of sad in a way. For all his effort, you know, the bottom line is unless you have certain mutated genes, no matter what you do, even following an extensive program like this, you're not going to make it to 100. You have to have certain mutated genes which are involved in DNA repair. All these people that you hear about that live to over 100 all have these gene mutations. And I, none of these people, <laughs> most of them never even exercise. They don't follow any particular diet, yet some of them live to 110 or more. Again, it's because of the mutated genes. They have an upgraded DNA repair system in their body that allows them to live longer. You cannot develop that. I mean, Johnson is taking measures to try and protect his DNA, but the bottom line is the older he gets, the less effective these measures are going to be. So unless he has the genes to, you know, these mutated genes to live to over 100, I strongly doubt that he will live to over 100. I mean, I have nothing against the guy. I hope the guy does make it to 100. But, you know, unless, again, unless he has those genes, it's all for naught. So I'll leave it at that. If you want more information on anti-aging, I cover a lot of anti-aging uh, research in my Applied Metabolics publication at www.appliedmetabolics.com. And, and the, the uh, difference between me 
and Johnson, uh, well, besides the fact that I don't have 800, 800 million and weigh 179 pounds, is that, is that uh, the information I supply on anti-aging is practical. It's stuff you can use today. You don't have to hire a team of 30 doctors and you don't have to spend two, 200, uh, what is it, $2 million a year. This is information you could apply today that will almost always help you increase your health span. So I also, uh, in, in Applied Metabolics, I give you a lot of information about nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormone therapy, supplement science, which supplements work, which don't. As I said, some of the supplements that Johnson uses are highly questionable. I mean, I know that he got this information from his doctors, but, you know, as I said in past videos, most doctors are not experts on nutrition. They don't take, they do not study tri uh, nutrition in medical school. And most, not all, there's a couple of them, most of them know, know next to nothing about food supplements. So they're not, they're not, and they're not the best sources about nutrition and food supplements. And this is who Johnson Reni relies on. But for all I know, maybe his, some of his doctors have studied nutrition. I don't know. You know, maybe they have. Who knows? But uh, I, copper, I co cover more topics than any other digital newsletter in my Applied Metabolics. It's 30 to 45 pages every month, no ads. It's by far the greatest resource for information about nutrition and exercise on the entire internet because nobody, I repeat, nobody, not even Brian Johnson, nobody can match by over 60 years of constant study and practical experience. And it's all in Applied Metabolics. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I give away $30,000 worth of medical testing machine. No, no, I'm just kidding. Each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and health. Uh, I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website that's only for subscribers. who can They can submit short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that comes to mind that pertains to nutrition, exercise. And as a appreciation of this subscription, I will answer the question. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments under these videos. Uh, hopefully, they're friendly comments, but, you know, if they're not, they're not. You know, what can I say? So, that's about it. Uh, I think in my last video, I forgot to mention about if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. So, I'll say it here. Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. I'm going to do that in the near future. Uh, you know, I, I might, it's almost been, a, it's been 11 months since my uh, beloved dog, Bruno, passed away. I'm still kind of mourning for him, to tell you the truth. And I know that the best way to deal with that is to get another dog, and I intend to do so. Because uh, I can tell you from my personal experience is, uh, is having a dog, it will make you feel about almost as good as taking all of Johnson's su supplements. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a lot less expensive, too. Anyway, take care. Thank you for listening.